It is one of the most highly anticipated national semifinal games ever. Kentucky and Massachusetts. They met earlier this season. Massachusetts beat them. But Syracuse awaits the winner. The Orangemen with an eight-point victory over Mississippi State. All set for Monday night to take on the winner of this battle. Jim Nance, welcome back to the Final Four. UMass lost only one time this season, ended the regular season Final Four, ranked number one in the country, again beat Kentucky, yet the Wildcats are favored here at the Final Four. One of the reasons why the way Kentucky has been playing in the NCAA tournament, they have been clawing indeed twice. They've been over 100 points, averaging over 94 a game. They have mauled their opponents by a margin of over 28 field goal percentage over 50 percent i mean they are red hot for billy packer but that has happened before for kentucky it has and it's not ancient history jim 1993 kentucky came into the final four as a number one seed had blown out everybody up to that point but they were the one number one that didn't make it to the final game got knocked off by michigan this should be a great one it should be kentucky and umass coming up when we return to the meadowlands in new jersey CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Chevrolet Trucks. Bud Light. Pizza Hut. And by AT&T. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Meadowlands for tonight's NCAA National Semifinal Game between the Kentucky Wildcats and the Massachusetts Minutemen. Now, let's make the starting lineup. For Kentucky, at forward, a 6'4 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 23, Derek Anderson. For Massachusetts, at forward, a 6'7 senior from Bronx, New York, number 3, Dana Dingle. forward to 6'8 sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 24, Antoine Walker. For Massachusetts is forward to 6'6 senior from Baltimore, Maryland, number 4, Dante Bryant. For Kentucky at center, a 6'10 senior from Evansville, Indiana, number 40, Walter McCartney. For Massachusetts at center, a 6'11 junior from Hartford, Connecticut, number 21, Marcus Kenby. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'1 senior from Brownsville, Tennessee, number 00, Tony Dell. For Massachusetts at guard, a 6'2 junior from Toa Alta, Puerto Rico, number 12, Edgar Padilla. A 6'2 junior from Lebanon, Kentucky, number 25, Anthony M. For Massachusetts is guard, a 6'3 junior from Boston, Massachusetts, number 24, Carmelo Travieso. And the coaches for Kentucky in the seventh season, Rick Pagino. For Massachusetts in his eighth season, John Calabar. Billy Packer, it's time to bring up the Packer points for game two. Well, Jim, these are so important, the guard combination. When you play Kentucky, you've got to have great guards to go against them, and without question, UMass does it, but Dean Treviso, Treviso, two of the best in the country. The long blue line, we're talking about that Kentucky bench, they come in to this uh, semifinal championship with 104 points off the bench. Tremendous, best in the country. Perimeter power, Kentucky is shooting 47%, not from inside, from three-point range. Terrific outside shooting team. The double-down factor, so tough to double down against Marcus Camby because he's such a versatile performer, but Kentucky will try to do it anytime he touches the ball with his back to the basket. It's been 17 weeks and 65 combined games since these two met at the end of November. Carmelo Traviasso said to this man, Tony Delk of Kentucky, as the two teams exited the floor, 
We'll see you guys again down the road. That's what he said to Tony Delft. And here they are, playing for the right to meet Syracuse Monday night for the national championship. Ed Hightower, Tom Rucker, Michael Kitts, the officials. Jim, a lot's changed from that game, but one thing that hasn't changed, Kentucky scored 32 points off the bench that night. UMass, zero. But, but UMass, UMass still came out with a victory. UMass won the game by 10. Had big leads in that ball game. The Kentucky battled back with outstanding outside shooting power. But in my estimation, Kentucky has, been, has done more to change the way it plays since that game than has UMass, and that may balance things off a little bit. controls it and UMass will set up first and it is McCarty on Canby down inside to get a lot of help from Walker Padilla way too strong but off Kentucky underrated backcourt underrated forwards Dante Bright Dana Dingle you don't hardly ever hear about them on this ball club but they get it done. A lot of experience in that position. Hot topic this week has been the UMass guard. Can be shot. Partially deflected. And no double down. McCarty was, McCarty was with him all by himself. Walker looked like he'd go in to end. McCarty three-pointer. And Bright pulls down the board. Both teams a little nervous, Jim. You sense that? Watching them. Yeah. All the buildup. I'm yeah. sure they are too. It had to affect them a little bit. It'll take them a while. You know, you don't see a lot of kids with sweats out there. You notice it? They're all very dry, kind of like a big boxing match in which the heavyweight champ comes out without a sweat. Very surprising. You don't like that? No, I don't. I think uh, normally teams should be sweating by now. Can be. Try to get it right back. Good weak side help by Anderson. Walker's passed off, thrown away, turned over to the Minutemen. Matter of fact, Jim, I don't know if I've ever seen that in a big ball game before. You don't see one guy out there. Looks like they all just came out of the shower and toweled off. All right, Weeks comes in. Tyrone Weeks for Camby. Just trying to slow things down. John Calipari wants to get a look to see how Kentucky's playing. Let Camby get a quick breath. Weeks is going to go in there to bang for a while. Said those forwards are up, are very underrated. We're talking about experienced players there. They've won a lot of basketball games. Sevier, so he's playing against Delk and doing a little bit too much body in with him there. Got to give him room to maneuver. Tony loves to rub off those screens. Straight man to man here. Weeks on Walker, and he is really pounding him with his upper body. That foul was called on Dante Bright. So Kentucky looking for its first points. Almost two minutes into the game. Tony Dell. Who else? Yeah, battles off McCarty's ball. Way too strong. And Bright with the board. You can see Nash trying to force the ball up quickly and then get the swing. Weeks. Nothing there. Wise decision. Get it back out. White's got a lot of power on Anderson, Jim. Weeks hustling. Hightower joins him on the floor. Back them in. Weeks has a lot of problems with his foot. See Camby coming right back into the ball game. Little subtle move by John Calipari trying to get his star settled down. Look, he tells Weeks, that's exactly what I wanted you to do. Gives him a little slap into the hands. Camby comes back in. Settles him down, like you say. And now they double him up this time. Camby talked to me yesterday, Marcus did, and said, when it comes into me and they double, I'm going to dish it out in a hurry. Won't get caught in what happened to Tim Duncan last week. Dell smartly 
knocked the ball off of Travieso. So it's Kentucky ball as McCarty almost threw it away for a second time. Well, Jim, it, is it the SEC fumbleitis today? I mean, some ill-advised passes. And there's the first thing it touched out of bounds was the Massachusetts player. So a good call. Just 2-0 UMass. Now it's Cambion Walker. 240 into the game. Mandel. Anderson. That's oh, Cambi. a foul on Camby. Just reached his hand up from underneath. Now, normally, you don't get called for a foul like that when you come up underneath the ball. It's when you chop down on the top that it costs you. John Calipari making some changes quickly here. And they bring Weeks back in. Rights out. Epps for the first two of the game for Kentucky. Straight out of bounds play, thrown right over the top. Here's the pressure. You've got to score to put the full court pressure on. First time Kentucky really gets an opportunity to do it. That ball deflected. Kentucky steals it. Behind the and one. So the Iso trying to throw the ball over Walker. Now, Jim, we showed it on the coach's edge why this press is so effective. You run into a double team, as we'll see right here, but the double team is a man who's six foot eight, not a backcourt six foot two performer. And Delk, who can get up in the air, really makes it difficult to throw over the top. There you can see it. Delk's long arms, beautiful passing by Walters, one of the best interior passing big men in the country. And here's the press. Travieso called for the foul and a 5 2 Kentucky lead. It's time they break it. Camby has not had an opportunity really to operate offensively. This Kentucky defense really out tough on the ball. Here's Camby inside, and he might get it back with a three-point play of his own. Now, Jim, that's what I said that makes him so tough to double down against because he's a maneuverable center. He doesn't post up and keep his feet in the same place. Now, watch how much movement. There's a solid back screen. Camby's on the move. So by the time he touches the ball, it's too late for the defense to get over there to double it. You can see Walker, who would normally be doubling, he was occupied with weeks. Nice job by Marcus Camby, the National Player of the Year. So McCarty, with the foul, goes to the bench and is replaced by Mark Pope. Camby ties it at five. Epps, who's having a sensational tournament. Dingle, almost, almost stolen. <laughs> Almost caught me there in the assist turno turnover ratio. Epps has just been phenomenal so far in the NCAA. Nine to one ratio for Epps. 27 assists, three turnovers is all during the NCAA tournament. In a fast pace up and down the court type game. I mean, that's just amazing. Bright has come back for UMass. Epps was falling away on the three. Pope follows it up. Camby rejects. This team sets all kinds of records in shot blocking. Good hit ahead. Travieso. He waited till Delk went by. And UMass back in front by two. You think these two guards don't feel each other? They don't even have to see each other. They feel each other. Great sixth sense. These two roommates. Anderson, three-pointer. Kentucky rushing their shots. They can get much better shots than this. Baseline. And Pope is making Camby run. You can see what Rick Patino wants to do. Wear down that big man in the middle. They get Delk inside. Walker snapped the pass inside. Kentucky only two out of nine from the field. Jim, it's not the way they're shooting the ball. It's the so shots that they're selecting to shoot is creating that bad percentage. Travieso picked up his second right there, Billy. And dealt to the line for two. Walker out, McCarty in. I make the same comment I made in the first game, Jim. If you don't have a long bench and your team is healthy, as this team is in University of Massachusetts, the one thing that can make you unhealthy is get a guy in foul trouble. So what they have to do now is they bring in a freshman, Charlton Clark, for Travieso, who goes out with the two. Well, you're, you're looking at a team whose starting lineup all average over 31 minutes a game. So you can see John Calipari having to go to that bench often and early, much more so than he normally would. Yeah, he already is. Tony Delk, the all-time leading scorer at the guard position in Kentucky school history. And this game marked his 100th consecutive start. 
Belt with five points. Kentucky and UMass exchanging punches early, all tied at seven. team got a surprise visitor in the locker room just before the game. Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy dropped in to wish them well. He told them that this is really a three-point situation. They've got the best team, the best player, and the best coach. He said he didn't really feel like giving them inspirational messages because he told me he feels that this team is really inspirational to everybody else. Back to you guys. All right, good stuff, Andrea. And UMass breaks the press. Padilla racing into the front court. This game tied at seven. Trying to swing the ball and then pump back in. They do a little high-low here with Camby on the inside with Weeks. Tried to go the lob, had Delph down there. There's the swing. Camby got a good shot off. Got some players on him, but a clear look at the basket. Anderson driving in. Camby underneath for the board. Really a slashing player is Anderson, Jim. Everybody thought he was going to pull back up and dish out. That was a good play on his part. Padilla to Camby. Not a bad slashing move by Padilla. And very unselfish. He could have put it up himself. The other end, Delp missing on the drive. Camby wants somebody to come back. He'll take a little rest right here coming up the court. Here's where Kentucky may, even on missed shots, press a little bit to make Camby have to work harder. Whips. And McCarty pulls it down. Too quick a shot for Massachusetts. McCarty fakes and steps in, hits the two. And can be a great defender in the paint, but at loss out there. See Epps forcing them to go sideline. Doesn't want him to go out there with a solid screen and come up. Didn't want him there. Padilla, jumper. That's, that's, that's why he didn't want him there. He tried to force him to go right. Kentucky racing, dealt, caught underneath, nowhere to go. And Kentucky's Anderson commits the foul. Look at this give up. Oh, just a great bounce pass. Camby sat right down there and caught it very nicely. Camby goes down, rolls. Padilla hits him perfectly. Look at him find that scene, Jim. You see how he sat down? Great fundamental basketball. The passer gets down the floor. That means the ball on the bounce pass will come up softer into the hands. UMass has brought back Carmelo Travieso. And for the first time, Enos Norville. Kentucky, though, with Walker. Pulled down by Bright. Kentucky really put the ball up quickly with nobody underneath the basket for the opportunity for offensive rebounds. It's kind of hurting them. Kentucky with subs also. Two freshmen, Ron Mercer, Wayne Turner, and the man guarding Shep Jeff Shepard a moment ago. That's a wild shot. Off Shepard, UMass. Nope, they say it was off. Off UMass, Kentucky ball. And Syracuse trying to figure out its opponent. But I'm trying to figure out how they got such good tickets. Who are those guys? <laughs> huh? Sitting there relaxing. I don't know if I've ever seen a team come back, Jim, and watch the second game of you. I don't recall. No. And they're back quickly. Hey, enjoy the final four. Absolutely. Walker. So far, Bright is having a great game off the defensive glass. Yeah, he has five rebounds. Inside, back to Bright. Another beautiful dish by Padilla. 13 9 minute men. Walker got the position and won. Well, Padilla came through and he committed the foul. You can see without Camby's presence down on the low post defensively, you mass in some trouble. Here's a great crossover dribble. And you saw Donna Bright running that court so well, it gets the pass. If you're playing with a guy like this, you know if you'll run the court, keep your eyes open, he'll get it to you. Can be returned. So shuttling in and out. Giving everyone a blow. And there's McCarty sitting for the second time. 
Jim, when I, I look back at that game in November 28th, Padilla played 39 minutes, Travieso 36, Canby 33, Dingle 31. So we already see John Calipari working against some of those minutes, trying to keep his team a little fresher. And this is why they're tough to press. Everybody can catch that ball on the run. Slams it home, another assist by Padilla. Padilla gets the assist, but Canby's the guy that made the catch in the pass to get it started. Not many teams have big men that can go ahead and pass to the open floor like this. Now, away from the ball. Here's another foul called against UMass. And it's going against Dingle. His first. Three, his first. Epps back in. Turner sits down. Here's Padilla again. Look at that bounce pass. Looking straight ahead. And how about the points? I said it was 32 to 0 in the first game, but the bench is starting to get a few here. Mercer taking it out. Padilla puts it in a place, though, where it's so <laughs> easy to score. You know? Shepard. Excellent leaper on the inside. Epps three-pointer, rainbow three. And that ties the score at 15. Tim Epps has elevated his game in all areas in this NCAA tournament. Well, the ace have been quiet so far, hadn't really been open for many shots, hadn't touched it. And had to sit on the bench for a while with two fouls. Got Shepard on him. Shepard, as I said, a great leaper, certainly matches him up physically. Actually, probably a better all-around athlete. What a screen, Camby sets Padilla. Look at hands out for Camby with the follow-up, too. How about that beautiful soft touch there? Just laid it on the glass. Single off his hands. There goes underrated forwards beating the man to the ball. All right, we go to the break. Padilla missing on this one, but can be in the right spot. You passed by two. Rick Patino said the loss to UMass at the start of the year helped us more than any win. It taught us how to potentially become a great basketball team. Well, of course, the big move that they made was put Epps at the point yep. and put Delk out at the two guard. They made that a change immediately after that ball game. Freshman Ron Mercer, what a nice turnaround shot that is. As I said, all the guys can handle the ball. Dingle helped bring it up that time. We have our sixth tie. We are nine minutes into the game. Mercer playing backcourt defensively now on Padilla. Tough shot. They had two players on Camby, including Pope. There was that double down effect. You can see it's much more effective against Camby when he posts up as opposed to when he's moving and gets into the post. McCarty spins, lost control of it, and traveled in the process. Great job by Clark coming over for weak side defensive help. There was no place for McCarty to go, Jim. And there's McCarty. What a target to try to throw over against the press. But there's a good target yes, to find also. Camby. Yep, you had a six foot six guy throw into a six foot eleven guy. Tough pass here, but Bright's in the right spot. Leans in with the body. He's going to the line for a couple. He's always uh, known how to use that body ever since he played center in high school at Dunbar in Baltimore. Number one high school team in the country when he was in senior at Dunbar. Of course, a school that's uh, had a number of great players get into the Final Four. One meant the MVP, Reggie Williams, the MVP of the championship game when Georgetown won the national championship. And they've had others through the years, too. Great players, that is. Reggie Lewis, Tyrone Bowles. He was a teammate, was bright, with Keith Booth, a cousin, played at Maryland this year, and also Michael Lloyd, formerly of Syracuse. Exactly who he would have been seeing in tomorrow's game had Michael stayed at Syracuse. If he gets there. If he gets there. That ball, last touch by Dingle. You see, Massachusetts not looking to pick up full court in the same intensity as is Kentucky, but changing things around a lot. Here's a double team out front. Mercer takes the jumper. Delk follows. A push. Yeah. A push from behind. Tony Delk didn't need to do it to get that rebound. For Delk, his 
first. I don't really see a flow in this game yet, Jim. Here we are. Yeah, you don't really have a good sense of it, do you? Ten minute mark. We've got a very close game, obviously, one point differential, but I don't think either team has settled into a pattern yet. Mercer just pick his pocket ahead. McCarthy. Wow. He had Camby on his right shoulder, but uh, Mer stopping that move. Mercer showed a lot of explosiveness there on the defensive end of the floor. You expect it from him offensively, but and, and another good play. Throws it away. Time out. Padilla too much. Looks like John Calipari wants his 20, and this is going to be one where he gets in their face. Just a 20. Jim, I don't know if there's any young coach that's built the program from where he took it over to where he has it right now. Five straight championships in the Atlantic 10. Regular season, as well as conference tournament championships. It's only done once before by the great Everett Case at MC State down at the Southern Conference. But an incredible job by this guy. He took over a program in 1988 that had suffered through 10 straight losing seasons. Do you think that Rick Pitino wishes he had kept that $5,000 in his pocket that he used to supplement his salary? Pitino, of course, on the board, a well-known story, on the board that helps select the coach. And he really is the guy that John owes his job to. Jordan, followed up by Walker. Well, you can't have Camby block the shots to get the rebound, too. Nobody there to help. Bressy's having its effect when the ball is not in Padilla's hands. You notice that? Whenever he's got it, something good happens. The rest of the guys are very phonetic out here. And Delp realizes that, too, so Tony, with his experience, trying to keep him occupied. Padilla looking for that screen. He goes away from it. Good dish. Camby. Good shot. Rattles out. Camby tips it up. Almost. McCarty comes barreling out of there. Kentucky running again. McCarty called the timeout as he was... Did he Locked get it? out of bounds? McCarty kind of, he's a guy that can put the ball on the floor, Jim, but he kind of lost concentration going down that sideline. Well, he signaled for the timeout. They said he was out of bounds first. Better off probably not getting it. I wouldn't want to burn one yeah, this early. No, not, not at this stage. Here he goes in the air. Hey, legally, it was a timeout that he should have got. He was in the air, has the right to call it. His foot had not touched the line. So the ASO has got to get in this game offensively, Jim. He hasn't been a factor yet. Padilla three. One ready to shoot. Good clear out by Kentucky. Well, Kentucky explodes from offense to defense and vice versa, don't they? And the blocks. And UMass ball off Walker. Travieso has made only, well, one shot. It's only taken one. Derek Anderson comes back in for the Wildcats. Mercer, the freshman, very active. Hit one shot while he was in there. McCarty out again. And, Jim, this team cannot afford to have Travieso not have a good offensive game. He had 20 against Georgetown. He had 21 against Central Florida, 14 against Arkansas, and 14 against Stanford. They have got to have production out of that young man. He's not going to be asked to handle the ball that much against the press, but he's got to finish at the end. Padilla got stuck and almost taken away by an alert Epps. You don't want to get up in the air in the backcourt to make a pass. UMass has gone almost four minutes with but one field goal. Camby, give and go to Dingle. Anderson coming from the weak side, got him before he could come down. I like that offensive set, though, by Massachusetts with a high screen and then kicking the ball back over so Camby can set up down low. It's one way they can get him down there without the double team. Two on Anderson. Alan Edwards comes in for the first time with Anderson's two whistles. He sits. And Jim Padilla bending over, grabbing those shorts. We've got eight minutes to go in this half. That young man's really been extended. They've already 
set up Camby for nine field goal attempts. He's made three of them. Well, he's had games where maybe you get him quiet for a while, then he explodes. Right? Good shot up and over Walker. Five for Bright. Bright had a 17.7 rebound game against Georgetown, so he's very capable. Dell jumper. Just a pure score. Hunt. Can't shoot it any nicer than that. Seven thirty to go in the first half. And what looked like it might be a real fast-paced, high-scoring first half's kind of settled down now a little bit. See how many different men, how many different men has Rick Pitino put on Padilla today? Yeah. You know, well, just brought in Edwards and he collects them. That's now. the fourth man that's guarded him so far in this half. Padilla has six assists. Bright scored on that one. It looks like straight man-to-man -man pressure with Mercer on Padilla, but watch it what happens when he reels to come up court. You're going to see pressure coming from three different directions. Kentucky takes their defense and turns it into offense. Here comes the three men in the trap. Mercer with the steal. McCarty gets it. Even Canby can't block that one. Kentucky leading 23-20 with 7.22 to go in the first half. UMass has attempted only one three-pointer. Jim, I think you got to set Travieso up for some kind of way to get Woo! off some shots here in this first half. He has really been shut down by Delp. See if they have anything in mind for him. There he comes off the screen. Too late. Right turnaround, too strong. Camby's on the line. They'll bring in Weeks. I really think that John Calipari on that particular time down court had in mind something for Traviesa. I realize that Bright was open in the low post, but you know where he's sitting right now, don't you? Over on the bench. Weeks is in there. Walker to great passer. Scores off the pass from Walker. Well, how nice it is to have a six foot eight man that can pass the ball. He's on the line, a turnover. I really think Walker's developed into the best passing big man in college basketball. Makes him so tough. And he can do other things. He can do other things. I'll tell you, you're looking at a first team All-America perhaps next year. Delp. He traveled. Uh, yep. Well, Travieso showed us against Allen Iverson that he can guard anybody, and he sure did the job on Tony Delp there. Stopped him on three occasions on one attempt to penetrate. So UMass down five. It's the largest deficit of this NCAA tournament. There was straight man-to-man -man pressure. Kentucky drops on back. <laughs> Got that steal. No call. He's reached in, forced it, dealt underneath. And they have a chance to go up a second time today that Tony Delk has finished off on the inside. He is an excellent finisher, whether it be on the break or on the drive. Terrific play by Tony Delk. Epps comes down floor, almost loses it, makes a good decision, and then there's Delk with that ability to finish, puts it up with a left hand. Two times the leading scorer in the state of Tennessee came board on board of Kentucky primarily as a scorer. Jim, I know he has great stats this year, but in my estimation, this young man's leadership is what separated Kentucky from the field during the course of the regular season. I mean, he, he realized early on it had to be the team before itself, and he's the guy that set the stage. And you've got a, your best player being your best leader. That's a terrific accomplishment. Dingle with a uh, cut lip and with two fouls. So an official timeout. Monday night, Syracuse, Jim Beheim. I was talking to him after the game, Billy, about 33 years there as a player, assistant coach. 
in the last 20 of the 33 years as head coach looking for that championship to take home. Jim, we're always looking for stories, you know, but Jimmy Beheim's attitude, I realize his personality is so much different from Jim Valvano's is the way, you know, they basically act. But, you know, they both remind me of two guys that, in talking to Jimmy Valvano back in 83 and Jim Beheim here, like, hey, what am I doing here? You know, I'm having a good time. I mean, <laughs> everything's a bonus in life. I mean, it's, uh, it's incredible how similar they are, even though they have different personalities. Jim Beheim says in 25 years, only twice has he forgotten to book a hotel at the Final Four. <laughs> Good One year was 87 because I didn't want to go, and he ends up qualifying for the Final Four, getting all the way to the title. And then this year, he forgot. <laughs> and here he is, well, a least. game away from the title. He was sure somebody from the Big East was going to be here. He just didn't know it was going to be serious. <laughs> and that pressure really taken... Massachusetts out of their offense early on here. They have not been able to get the ball where they want it. Gaudiaso had not been able to even get a shot. Hammered. Gaudiaso has been just locked down. And that's called on Allen Edwards, his second. And we're talking about a Massachusetts team that got to the line this year. 899 times coming into this basketball game. They do that because it can be such a factor inside. There we see Dingle leaving the floor. Probably is going to have to get to some work on that cut. Tough break for Massachusetts. That shortens up that bench an awful lot. And this man will have to be called on a little bit more. Tyrone Weeks out of Philadelphia. Always viewed Hank Gather as a mentor back in that neighborhood. Gather used to bring him back some of his sneakers. Pass them on to the kids in the neighborhood. Hank Gather uh, gathers a big uh, hero back in Philadelphia. Still to this day. And don't forget him. Oh. No, they traveled. They've got him again on that call. And there he goes with that j steps, jump stop. Now Rick Latino's going to say, hey, wait a that was a Hank Nichols perfect display of what is traveling on that play that he gives to the officials before the season starts. That will be in his reel next year, I can assure you. Travi Aso have blood on his arm, Jim, or is that just like a pencil mark? You see it there? Big red welt on his arm. I'm looking for it. It's on his left arm. They already are down with Dingle down with a cut. Sure can't afford that. Padilla, rather. Padilla to inbound. Okay. Watch out, he better not move too much. And the official looked down to see if he moved that second foot. He got stuck almost like anchored in cement down yeah. there. There it is, uh, that's Padilla's arm, see that? So it looks like it's a scratch. Twenty-eight, twenty-one Wildcats approaching five-minute mark, first half. So far, Kentucky has taken Massachusetts out of what they want to run half court. Perdia wildly threw that one up, got it back somehow. And he'll go to the line for a couple. Just created a shot and a good lesson for young players. Sometimes when you're down in low like that as a small man, don't try to make the shot as much as you're trying to get fouled. Excellent move. Shepard's second. We'll send Edgar Padilla to the line. Shepard to the bench. Padilla, an outstanding player in Massachusetts on a high school level at Spring in Springfield. But was kind of overshadowed by the exploits of Travis Best there and left Springfield after his junior year. Went back to Puerto Rico and of course then was recruited out of that back to Massachusetts. Padilla and Travioso hoping to play for Puerto Rico in the Olympics this summer. <laughs> Puerto Rico will have an excellent basketball team. So their addition uh, obviously will be very prominent. But uh, believe me, Puerto Rico will be well represented without them if they fail to make it. Travieso finds out, but into the arms of Weeks. What was that? Travieso can be 
flings it into the air, and Bright reached in for the foul. Jim, that reminded me of what we saw Mississippi State do in the first game. Make plays that weren't there, causing a lot of turnover. Travieso may be getting a little frustrated. He can't get anything started. Second on Bright. And now they bring in Wayne Turner out of Boston. And Travieso on the year, Jim, at 102 threes. The New Atlantic 10 record. So you're looking at a young guy right now that uh, John Calipari needs to get open somehow with 4.34 to go in this first half. Kentucky has done a great job on him with their defense. Well, he made 18 threes alone in the first four games of this tournament. Now they've got a chance for a break as Travieso blows out. Followed up by Bryant. 28-24. Bright has been picking this team up with an excellent first half. Now the UMass fans, a good back top. Turner got the roll. Walker with the pass and assist. Excellent back screen there. There's Mercer, who did a pretty good job with defense. That Presley was in there before. Two freshmen on the floor now for Kentucky. Turner and Mercer. Turner manning the ball right now. It's a double team. Nice hit. Bright to the hole. Lays it in. Brilliant play by Marcus Campy. He felt the double team coming. Got rid of the ball immediately. Mercer stepped to the hole. Mercer having a big game, Jim. Coming off the bench with very productive minutes. You can almost see that one coming. 3.30 remaining, first half. Belt with 10, Kentucky up six. Cole has been given two stitches to that bloody flip, and we expect him to return. Delk, the leading scorer with 10 points, can be credited with three blocks, five rebounds, seven points. Jim, but the stat that jumps out to me is UMass five points out of their backcourt. And I really think that that's an absolute key for them in the next three minutes is to get Travieso a shot some way so that he can get his stroke going before he goes in at halftime and starts thinking about it. Brought in a new player for UMass, number 44. And there he is, almost turning it over. Nunez, Rigoberto Nunez for UMass. And all his job is to go out there and set some screens. Tony Delp down on Travieso, and he really is keeping an eye on him. Double high screen. Camby over the top, weak. Beautiful. Camby, hard effort, but no points. Look at Walker handle that ball in the open court. He can really do that. Delp over three. Travieso, good hustle to get that rebound off the floor. Beat Turner to the ball. That was a Kentucky horse race for that one, wasn't it? Two guys going. Kind of like Cigar the other day, huh? Going for that ball. Well, Campy, outside they call it. You know, Rick Patino had a horse running earlier today. Is Mr. Right? Tyler ran at Turfway Park. And what happened? Finished third. How about that? He's not looking that, for any third that, place that finish. May be, that may be good. A show? What is that? A show? That's, is that a place? That's, that's the show. A show? He doesn't want any show here. He wants a guy at the wire. Pope sits with his first. Do you miss the third place game at the Final Four? <laughs> no, I, I, I really think that that's something that uh, should have been done away with a long time ago. You remember when it was done away with, the last one? 1980, uh, 1981. One. Yeah, 1981. in Philadelphia. Yep. LSU was uh, down there against Virginia in the, yes. in the third place game. Clark yeah. comes back in. That was the Final Four in which President Reagan was shot. And uh, very trying time for us there for a while. Coming up on pins on at the half, Pat Quinn, Coach K, Coach Herrick, George, all the first half analysis, plus Jim Beheim will be joining them. Mercer trying to post up down low. Turner, two-point shot. There's a push by Delk, he got away with it. Look at that hold on Mercer, called on Mercer. But see, this is one team, Jim, that can't get into foul trouble. You know, Rick Pitino, really is. Yeah, I mean, how do you get in foul trouble when you can look down that bench, 12 deep quality players? 
So Jim Beheim will get more comments from the coach who won the first game here today, 77. 69. The team committed only five turnovers. Got a big second half from Todd Bergen. And Jim, when you think of great semifinal games, I think back of Kentucky Duke. Adolph Rutz Club sitting over in that other wing with Utah and, and, and sitting over there with Texas Western. Everybody wondering about the Kentucky Duke. Who's going to win that one? They'll, they'll be 30 the years ago. Yep, 30, 30 years ago. ago 1966. Year. Kentucky won the game, went to the final, and Don Haskins Club beat Adolph Rupp's Club. Thirty-two, twenty-eight, two, ten, remaining first half. One-four offensive set, trying to post up Delk inside. Boy, Clark is giving him a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Walker's got Canby away from the basket. Walker. Nice passing, and that was just a two. Nice passing by Turner and Walker together. Seven for Walker. Not have really been a first half of spurts like the first time they play when UMass led by 19 at 29-10, only to see Kentucky come back and tie it at the intermission. See, there's the double team. Weeks has got to anticipate the double team throw before he catches the ball. Camby would have been wide open for an easy shot. Official, who admits he never saw it, they so they look arrow. arrow, and it belongs to Kentucky. We see the replay. Now watch, when that ball comes in, here's the double team. You have got to be ready to pass this minute that you touch the ball, throw the ball opposite from where the double team man came. Looked like McCarty kind of hiked it out of bounds. John Calipari trying to get a nice little discussion going. Both coaches handling themselves very well on the sideline. These two met in the Sweet 16, these two coaches, two teams, 1992. It was the uh, prelude to the Kentucky Duke game in a regional final, speaking of Kentucky Duke games. Set up one of the greatest. The interesting thing in that game is that Calipari got called for a technical for being out of the coach's box. You remember that, Billy? Yes, I do. Pivotal point in that game. We were watching that down in Lexington, weren't we? We were. Yep. Getting ready for the uh, Southeast Regional, where the Fab Five came out of. We had Camby Walker. Walker thinks he can take on the dribble and does. Camby, though, just hammers that one out of bounds. Four on the shot clock. Now, let's see how well Kentucky recognized it. Look at this, a neat move by Patino. Real quick, he gets Epps in the game, realizing Epps is his best decision maker, so he brings him in there with a four-second situation. Plus, he gets the time to stop a little bit so his team can get organized. A very clever move. Leans in. And did that pay off? Got a Terrific piece of coaching there. 36-28. Nobody coming to the ball. Now Clark does. 40 seconds to go in the half. Well, Jim, one thing didn't happen that I thought had to happen for Massachusetts, and that is Travieso had to be out there getting off. He didn't do it in the first half. Walker. Telegraph pass. 20 seconds to go. You know, the last two Final Fours, we've had buzzer beaters at the half. Yeah. Damon Stottlemyre did it two years ago, and then Dwight Stewart with the half-court heave last year. Well, I don't see if we get one here. I don't think Kentucky's going to let Massachusetts have a chance at one of those. Let's see if they can make one, though, to beat the buzzer. Well, they won't throw a bomb, will they? They get it inside. Uh, there's Camby's fire. <laughs> Jim, I was, rooting, I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. That would have been the all-time call. You, you were halfway out of your chair. All right, the eight-point lead ties Kentucky's largest lead of the half. And the score, Kentucky 36, Massachusetts 28. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Burger King. Extra Strength Tylenol. Goodyear. And by Gateway 2000.